Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Royce and I'm a senior here at Carlin Newman High School and I was chosen to share something that I find is important and that should also be important for our school's educational system. So I wanted to start off by asking how many of you have ever been sitting in your classroom and then you looking at the clock and it seems like, damn, this could not get any more boring. Like, this happens all the time to people of all ages, which is so concerning because that means they're losing so much opportunity that they could have been increasing their knowledge or increasing their educational capacity or increasing their, their understanding of the concepts that are going on around them. And the problem is it's so hard for teachers to, to communicate with their kids because the child development is moving faster than they even realize. And because there's hardly any classes being taught on the subject and hardly any information at all going around besides maybe one TED talk that you hear, there is nothing to back it up or nothing to support it or nothing to help it. And that's why I'm here today. That's why what's important to me to share it to you guys and to share it to our school's educational system. So why must grades one through 12 be so similar? They all follow the same concept, and that's basically something you've heard all your life. Sit down, be quiet, stay in your seat. He raise your hand, here's a quiz, longer test, and then you end up with a grade, and that's it. We should move on from this and start something a little more fundamental, something a little more beneficial to the people around us and to the students that work here and to the teachers who, who teach and can't even get people to listen in their class because people have just zoned out the entire time and are just staring at that clock just waiting for the bell to ring. So what sparked my interest in this is my CBSL project. I am here with, in this I'm here with two of my greatest friends at this school. Their names Matt Bertaco and Justice Henderson. We do this uh, PE and nutrition class at our local charter school down the road and these kids are like such this energy and the, the personality that, that we've lost throughout the years. And I wanted to get into that. I, want, I was interested in it. I wanted to, to get invoked by it. And through that, I started to realize that there are certain kids in that class that procrastinate more than others. And that goes through every year. And now that I see it more clearly, it's starting to concern me because I am one of those people. <laughs> All right. It's, a constant problem, but I feel there are ways to get around it, and if people get help, then maybe we won't have this problem in the future as well. So I have three steps for, for schools to take around the world even to start this movement to create a better educational system for the people who are a little bit slower, or the people who aren't as quick or can't learn as much in a short period of time and they can't just sit in one desk for two hours straight. It can't happen to some people. I'm one of, like, it's relatable. I know there's people out there just like me. So I'm here to speak for you, all right? So the three steps that I see are, the first one is personalized curriculum. The second one, individualized attention. And the third one is to and punishment. I mean, these three things sound kind of broad and vague, and that's just about what I'll go into. For, so first, I'll talk about the personalized curriculum. All right. So <laughs> this, this picture was kind of funny to me because I swear to God that's what I looked like. Because if that guy's hair was orange, I swear, that's me. And I just thought it was funny because it reminds me when I was young that concepts were harder to comprehend. Like I was sitting in my third grade class, I remember, and I was being taught by my teacher, Miss Thai, and she was writing cursive on the board. And I was like, where are these lines coming from? Uh, there's like, they were moving around. I couldn't understand a single thing. These, they made no sense. So I couldn't understand that. It took me two and a half years to learn cursive. And that was not only embarrassing, but I feel like it could have been done better for not only me, but the educational system. So I'm not just going to blame myself for that. All right. So the second one is some individualized attention. Like that, this already goes around some schools today. There's 
Tutoring. Tutoring is a great example of individualized attention. It's where some kids who may not have the best grades or they can't get the best concepts or they have a subject that they're having trouble in, these people can have help. And that's the best way that can improve what's going on. Uh, so 27% of all kids in the U United States get tutored. More than one in five people. So if you look around, Five of your best, you look at five of your best friends, at least one of them has probably been tutored in their life. Like, so it's not uncommon. So people are all the same, people have been tutored, people have had difficulty in classes. Why has nothing been addressed to it? Like, why are we still sitting in the same situation? This is some statistics that have been taken up about some kids in elementary schools who have been tutored. Kids with a DE or DNF or whatever their grading system was, 23% of them were able to get up to a passing grade. That's, that's pretty good, but look at this other part of the pie chart, all right? 77% of people with passing or failing grades or a C grade was able to bring it up to an A or a B. That's substantial if you didn't have that help. Where would that have come from? Would you have still failed? Is there anybody else who would have helped you? No. So to end punishment, this is my favorite one. All right, because I'm, I get in trouble every left and right angle I go to. You know, I'm sitting in class, I have my earbuds in. I should have my earbuds in anyways. You have to take them out, take my phone. I get a detention, stay after class. I don't want to deal with that. Like, that's one thing. But what I've learned in the class that I've been teaching, I was, learned, I was taught that punishment was the way you could correct somebody's faults. It's not the case. Every time I punish this kid, he goes around and does the same thing again. That didn't seem right. I did multiple, re so much research on this. Like, I got tired of books and articles, and I was like, all right, I'm gonna just do this the best I can. And this quote stood out to me of everything I read. Too often we forget that discipline really means to teach, not to punish. All right. A disciple is a student, not a recipient of behavioral consequence. If that doesn't say it, this book was written by two people who have PhDs in brain development and uh, kids neuroscience. So these are the two sophisticated people who can be trusted, who can have the right research to establish what we wanted and what like basis to go off of. And they were talking mostly to parents and teachers and people who are involved with kids because the kid's life is the most important time like out of the entire maybe 100 to 75 years that you live or something. Childhood is the most susceptible to change and that's what needs to be protected. It needs to be helped. It needs to be supported. And if not, the slightest change could cause a dramatic effect in somebody's life. So, personalized curriculum, individualized attention, and, this, and punishment. These three things could be the start of a better educational system for everyone. It's maybe too late for my generation, but to the next, no. All right, thank you for letting me share.